If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenrelf, or Ninja. Aether Vault has given us a new spoiler, Mechanized Production, it's a 4 mana, 2 in blue blue, Enchantment, it's an aura, enchant target artifact you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of Enchanted Artifact. Then, if you control eight or more artifacts with the same name as one another, you win the game. Plus some great flavor text. Give me eight walkers, I'll give you a city. So this is the kind of card that looks like it's only really going to make waves in Standard, at least as far as I've been able to see. It's too slow for Modern, it has too many better cards to compete with in Legacy and Vintage. I, yes, EDH. It will see EDH play, obviously. Uh, but it seems like it's the kind of card that's built to abuse some interactions in Standard. And I'd like to give you some of those right now. So, And while I do so, I'll go into more depth about mechanized production itself. So the first one is Animation Module. Now, notice that on mechanized... Uh, mechanized production, it does not say if you control eight or more of the enchanted artifact. Just simply eight or more artifacts that share a name with one another. Well, lo and behold, if you put that onto an animation module, you're probably not getting up to eight animation modules. What you're probably doing is getting up to eight servos, the colorless one ones that are artifacts. And it doesn't have a restriction on tokens, of course, just Artifacts, not artifacts themselves, not artifact creatures, not artifact land, artifacts. As long as they share the same name. Tokens happen to share the same name with one another, if they're the same kind of token. Servos, well there you go, easy enough. So you put this on an animation module, then any time you put a plus one plus one counter out, say with Oath of Ajani, first thing that comes to mind, or Fabricate, anything with Fabricate, then, yeah, with two out, you'll start making two servos thanks to uh, the two mana you spend. Next turn, on your upkeep, make another animation module and you can get, with three mana, up to three servos. You see where this is going. The number of animation modules you have on anything that comes out of mechanized production goes up linearly, but in the case of module, the number of servos goes up exponentially. And that means that you can win before getting to the magic number eight for the enchanted artifact. Uh, you can do it with only two, three, four, however many uh, modules out. So animation module may not be the most powerful one. It might be. I could very well be wrong. But I don't think so. I think we have some more powerful ones coming. Next we have Thraben Inspector. Now, obviously this is not an artifact, uh, but it does create an artifact. A clue. Now again, it doesn't have to be an actual card, it can be a token. Clues are artifacts, and there are some decks that get clues out awfully quickly in the format right now. Up until this point, they've lacked real win conditions. This might give them another way to go about doing it, though. Now, obviously, whichever clo uh, clo whichever Chloe, whichever clue you enchant with this aura, will not be sacrificable. Uh, you need to keep that around. So maybe it's a little anti-synergistic, that's usually not what you're trying to do, but it gives you another potential win condition in a deck that usually lacks them. Next we have Panharmonica. This one is value. You can't win before you get eight Panharmonicons just using that itself, but you never play Panharmonicon by itself. It's the kind of card that works well with other things. So, slowest scenario, you get eight Panharmonicons and you win the game that way. Much more likely, though, you'll be getting crazy value out of your uh, Noxious Gear Hulks and your Torrential Gear Hulks, or just any Gear Hulk. Uh, anything that says enter the battlefield, you'll be getting so much value out of that that you can beat the opponent on fewer than eight if they happen to deal with your enchantment or the original artifact after some time, if you've gotten any value out of this, 
then you'll, you're still so far ahead that you might just be able to outvalue your opponent. And so a card like Panharmonicon gives you a backup win condition of just usually beating face, usually getting so much value out of the cards that you cast that it doesn't matter. The next three all have a similar theme. We have Metallic Mimic, very sim simply two mana lords. It, it doesn't do much when there's already a board state. But if there isn't, if you play this on turn two and then you know, cast one thing that happens to be, uh, I don't know, a construct, an assembly worker, then yeah, you'll get more value out of it over, on and on and on. And it also works with Adaptive Automaton as a tribeless tribal lord, I suppose. Uh, next we have Chief of the Foundry. This one will affect the board uh, immediately, even if it's already developed. Uh, other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Obviously, if you have more of these, shenanigans. You'll have some awfully big artifacts before too long. And then Foundry Inspector makes artifacts you cast cost one less to cast. I actually think that this is the least useful even though eventually it will affinity for artifacts, all of your artifacts. <laughs> That'll be pretty nice. But by the time that this has already come down, or rather by the time that mechanized production has already come down, you might not need Foundry Inspector as much. It'll still help with a few things, Gear Hulks, Metalwork Colossus, I guess, but not anywhere near as much. But between the first two, they give aggro decks, artifact aggro decks, the ability to splash blue for more lords. If you want to think of it this way, it's kind of like having up to 12 lords right now. Uh, metallic... Mimic, there we go. Metallic Mimic. And Chief of the Foundry, and Mechanized Production on either of them. And you'll have some awfully big dudes. It's, it's going to start to feel a little bit like Merfolk. I know that's a bit of an exaggeration, but since you're not paying colored mana, you're hopefully not getting as much. That's the idea anyway. And then my favorite, at least of the ones that work, is Aetherfall. <laughs> Keep myself from cursing. Aetherflux Reservoir. <laughs> Okay, so whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. Now, in and of itself, that doesn't shine with mechanized production because you're not casting another artifact. You're simply putting another copy out. But once you have enough of these, it becomes ludicrously easy to gain ridiculous amounts of life. Again, slowest case scenario, you'll get eight of these and win the game. But even in that slowest case scenario, cast a spell or two to gain enough life to keep you alive long enough to win the game that way. Or, you could just get enough of these that you combo off similarly to the current life gain storm deck that's in the format, the Aetherflux storm deck. That deck benefits from having multiple reservoirs. Well, this gives you additional copies of Aetherflux reservoir. You can win just by getting 50 life with a few of them out, or, again, if the opponent's uh, if you just keep hitting lands, or, no, that's a bad way of putting it. If you can't find enough spells to combo kill them, at least it can stall the game for you. Every cantrip can turn into gain 6 life, 8 life. You get the idea. So, those are the ones that stood out most to me. The next one I want to talk about, the last one actually, I misread this and thought that I had broken the format, and then I read it again. It doesn't work, but it looks cool, so I wanted I want to try to tell you. We have a spoiler in Aether Revolt called Gonti's Aether Heart. You you can see where this is going already. I misread it such that I did not see the word legendary. If Gonti's Aether Heart were not legendary you could take infinite turns in standard. And the way that this would work is, it enters, you gain two energy. Cool. We see that it costs eight energy, and by the way, that's some weird templating. Uh, it's, it's so many energy counters that even I'm, I'm having to look like, wait a minute, how many is that? Yeah. Come on. Well, in, in any case, regardless, and then you exile it and take an extra turn. 
Fair enough, right? So what you would do is you would play Gonti's Aetherheart, and then you would put the mechanized production on it. And then the next turn, you'll gain 4 energy when the next Gonti's Aetherheart enters the battlefield. And then you'll gain 6 energy the next turn. But you're not popping them yet. The next turn, you create one, gain 8 energy, and any of them, except the one that's being enchanted. Uh, exile, pay 8 energy, exile it, take your extra turn. On the next turn, create another copy, gain 8 energy... Yeah, you get where this is going. If you had a mirror gallery in Standard, you could do that. The silliest turbo fog when conditioned. Take infinite turns in Standard. But of course, that does not work because this is legendary, and even if it weren't legendary, it's a 6-mana artifact being enchanted by a 4-mana aura, and then it takes turns to set up. It, it, it would be too slow, I think. It would be difficult for me to see that working well uh, in a deck that's built to stall the game, or against a deck. Uh, if they're fumigating, I guess you could run fogs. You get the idea. Just It's not enough. But... I don't know. Now I want to go brew with some mirror gallery just to make that work. Some modern jank. Absolute jank. Alright. <laughs> Take care, Magic Community. I'm having fun, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.